We're going to work through another Newton's Laws problem with more than one mass in the system. And the additional challenge we're going to take on to this kind of problem is one in which the coordinate system will be somewhat different for the two masses in the problem. In this problem, we have two masses, capital M and little m, and they are connected to each other by a light string. So the string runs over a pulley and down to the mass little m. Capital M sits on a frictionless table little m hangs off the side of the table. If there was no string, we would expect that little m would just fall. Because there is a string, little m isn't free to fall without pulling big M along with it. If we can calculate what is the acceleration of the system and what is the tension in the string. As before, we're going to have to start with drawing free body diagrams for the two objects in the system. Free body diagrams, again, means draw the object, one of these two objects, all by itself as if there is nothing else in the system and indicate all the forces as vectors acting on the objects. So let's begin with capital M. It sits on a table and if it weren't for the table it would fall straight to the ground. So there's a force, a capital MG, that uh, describes a gravitational attraction to the Earth. There's also a force, capital N, here that describes the table pushing back up on this mass and prevents it from falling. There's also the force from the tension of the string which pulls this mass to the right. For the second mass, there's two forces acting on this thing. There's gravity pulling straight down and it pulls with a magnitude little m times g. And there's a tension in the string, but the tension the string pulls back up. In other words, the tension of the string tries to counteract the free fall that would come from gravity. If we cut this uh, string, the, the little mass would, uh, would accelerate with value g. So we must draw this arrow for the tension to upward in this case. Next, we should start with a coordinate system. I'm going to draw uh, one in which the, ver the vertical direction off the table is y and the horizontal direction off along the table is x, and positive x means that the mass, capital M, is sliding toward pulley. That's a fine coordinate system, but we have to think about what happens to the second mass, little m, if the mass, big M, moves one meter to the right in the x direction. What does this mass do? It falls one meter down. It doesn't move to the left and right, it goes down. So that suggests a slightly unusual coordinate system, one in which x for the little mass has to point in the downward direction and y would be in, in perpendicular to that. That's because if big ma the mass big M moves to the right then the mass little m moves down. It's as if the coordinate system takes a right angle turn as we go over this pulley. So in a sense what the x direction measures is not left or right or up and down but distance along this rope. Our next step is to write down Newton's laws for the two objects. And by Newton's laws, we mean using Newton's second law to write that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Since Newton's second law is a vector equation, we have to do this in both the x and y direction. For the cap mass capital M, there, is a, a, there are forces in the y direction. And so we can write down that mass times acceleration in the y direction has to equal the sum of forces. Those are in the positive y direction, capital N, the normal force, and the negative y direction, mg. So we have n minus mg. And we know that the mass capital M doesn't leave the table flying upward or going down into the table, so the acceleration is zero. And so I set this equation to zero. The mass capital M also has a force in the x direction along the table, or along the string. And so we can write mass times acceleration in the x direction is equal to t. That's because if I look at this free body diagram, the only force acting in the x direction for capital M is t. There's a third equation that we can write down, and that is Newton's second law for this, the mass little m. It only experiences forces in the x direction, which is up and down or along the string, and because the x direction for the mass little m points downward if it's positive, that means that you write plus mg minus the tension 
in this frame equals mass times acceleration. This direction, or this set of signs, is suggested by the fact that t points in the negative x direction. It points upward for this little mass, and gravity points in the positive x direction because positive x is down toward the Earth. So little m times a sub x has to equal plus mg minus t. Now we have three equations, one, two, oh. three, and there are three unknowns in this problem. The three unknowns being the normal force, the tension and the strain, and the acceleration in the x direction. We've already set the acceleration in the y direction equal to zero. So our last step after having written this down for all of the, the bodies in the problem is to solve these equations. The normal force is easy to solve for because we have one expression in which it appears, and so we can move capital Mg over to the right-hand side of this equation, and I have N is equal to Mg. The next step is to look at this equation that says M times A sub X is equal to the tension, and M times or little m times a sub x is equal to plus mg minus t. The, uh, the variable t appears in both of these two expressions, and so I can use this middle one right here to substitute in for t in the lower one. So we'll do that now. Instead of mg minus t, little mg minus t, I'm going to have little mg minus capital M times ax. Now I have an equation little m times ax equals mg minus capital M times ax, and I have only one unknown in this equation. I can move ax over to the other side, and I have mg is equal to the sum capital M plus little m times a, or the acceleration in the x direction is equal to the ratio of little m over the sum of m plus m times little g. Now that I solve for the acceleration, I can go back uh, into this middle expression over here in step three and get the tension as well. So these are my two final expressions. A is the ratio of little m over the sum times g, and the tension equals the product of the two masses divided by the sum times g. Notice that this has the right units because um, this is a mass squared in the numerator divided by a mass. So it has one uh, factor of mass times g, which is associated with tension. Our last step in the process is to look at limiting cases, and I'm going to do that now. If we think about one extreme case in which the mass hanging on the end of the string is approximately equal to zero, or in other words, it's really, really light compared to the giant bowling ball sitting on the table. Well, I expect in this case, intuitively, that nothing should move. In other words, the gravitational attraction of this little mass is not enough to actually make anything ha uh, happen here. And if I look in these expressions and I look at what happens when I set little m equal to zero, well, it looks like a would be zero because the little m appears in the numerator right there. And it looks like the tension would be zero. That seems intuitive to me because in this case, I expect capital M sitting here on the table and a limp string uh, just kind of laying over the edge of the pulley. The other extreme is when capital M is very, very small, and compared to little m, or I could set capital M equal to zero. If I did that, then in the expression for acceleration, I have little m divided by little m times g. In other words, the acceleration just equals g. That makes sense to me, because if this thing was infinitely light, this capital M, then I have essentially a string with nothing holding it back uh, tied to a mass and the mass is just going to fall and free fall. I would also find that the tension in the string, if I look at the case when capital M is zero, the tension is zero. So this middle uh, example looks quite intuitive as well. Perhaps a third, uh, not as intuitive, um, is if we set the two masses equal to one another. If one does that, then we find that the acceleration is half of g, and the tension is half times mg. Our particular problem uh, states that the little mass is half as big as the big mass, and the big mass is 4 kilograms. If we insert those numbers into our solutions for the acceleration and the tension, we find that A works out to be one-third of G, 
or about 3.3 meters per second squared, and the tension of the string works out to about 13 newtons.